you also, Chairman. Great. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the June 22nd, 2023 Parks, Recreation and Community Services Commission regular meeting to order at 532. This meeting is taking place entirely in person in the city council chambers. The public is accessing the meeting via the Santana YouTube channel or the city's website. Please bear with us as the technology may disrupt the flow of the meeting. Will the recording secretary please call roll? Thank you, Chairperson. Commissioner Matthews? Commissioner Torres? Present. Commissioner Nelson? Commissioner Wu? Here. Commissioner Gomez? Present. Commissioner Diaz. Present. Chairperson Herrera. Here. You have a quorum, Chairperson. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, will you now all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, next on the agenda is presentations for employees of the month and uh, community service recipient. So I will now hand this over to Commissioner Wu. Commissioner Wu, would you like to read your employee of the month? Yes. Great. Uh, Commissioner Diaz? For Employee of the Month, I have Gavino Aguilar. He's been with the city for five years. He's the maintenance attendant. Gavino joined the zoo initially, initially in a temporary capacity, but loved the zoo so much that he made it a long-term arrangement in the form of a part-time position. Gavino always gives 110% and is supportive, caring, and helpful to all his coworkers and the community he serves. Gabino keeps the zoo moving in the right direction by tackling anything from setting up a major event to collecting browse branches to feed the animals with special diets. Gabino is a creative problem solver and a great member of our team. Congratulations, Gabino. Uh, Commissioner San Matthews, do you want to read uh, Employee of the Month? Yeah, yes. Um, Josue Menzabel, it's um has been nominated for Employee of the Month for the City of Santa Ana. Josue is a, uh, is a program coordinator and has been working diligently in the five short months that he has been here with the city's aquatic team. He has had a big role in contributing to the new in-house aquatic programming. He has been a lifeguard for over seven years and is currently a certified lifeguard instructor with the American Red Cross. Josue has assisted and taught multiple lifeguard trainings to the new lifeguard staff, spending countless hours during the week and giving up most of his weekends. Along with his trainings, Josue has been preparing the pool facilities to safely open for the 2023 summer season. Josue currently oversees two pools, the Jerome and Memorial um, pools where he is in charge of 20 plus lifeguards, recreation swim and swim lessons offered to the public splash, to the public splash camp and TRF. Josue has been doing a great job and continues to carry the team as we open the pool. It takes a village and we would not be here without his help. Congratulations, Josue. Thank you very much. Great. And I'll now read, uh, we have a community service award uh, for the Parks and Recs and Community Services Agency nominating Mia Baum. Um, Mia began volunteering at the zoo in January 2022 and started as an animal service volunteer in March of 2022. 
Mia has volunteered over 500 hours today and is extremely reliable and has a great attitude. Uh, Mia just recently graduated from Chapman University with a bachelor's of science and health sciences and is interested in veterinary science. Uh, Mia assisted the zookeepers with care of the animals and volunteers on Wednesdays assisting our veterinary team. So we can give a round of applause to Mia. Great, thank you all for these recognitions for employees of the month, executive director. I think uh, it's great that we continue to honor and uplift uh, the hard work of, of our staff and volunteers. Uh, next on the agenda is time for public comments. Uh, recording secretary, does anyone wish to speak? At this, per at this time, Chairperson, there are no public comments. Right. And we, do we have folks on Zoom? That's a negative, Chairperson. Okay, no folks on Zoom. Uh, okay, next on the agenda is the consent calendar. Uh, item one and two are the minutes of the regular meeting, May 25th, 2023, as well as excused absences. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting, May 25th, 2023, and excused absences? I so move to approve the minutes of May. Uh, any second? Got a second from Commissioner Diaz. Uh, do we do roll call vote? Thank you, Chairperson. Commissioner Matthews. Commissioner Tor Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Commissioner Torres. Approved. Commissioner Wu. Approved. Commissioner Gomez. Approved. Commissioner Diaz. Approved. Chairperson Herrera. Approved. Duly noted. Great. Um, so this is the end of the consent calendar. Um, next on the agenda is new business. Tonight we have three items. I'll turn this over to our Recreation and Community Services Manager, Tim Pagano, which will discuss the quarterly presentations by managers. Good evening, Chairperson and Commission. Um, for number three, we want to discuss, because we've heard from the Commission, um, about the amount of information that we're presenting to you um, uh, during our monthly presentations and our meetings and everything like that. So what we are doing here is we're proposing an idea to either um, have a report out quarterly um, as opposed to every single month or stagger our presentation so that the library and zoo would go one month and then you would hear from parks and recreation the following month. It may shorten down the time that we spend together um, and it will give us an opportunity to kind of share more at length and at breadth of what it is that we want to um, present so that you guys are aware of the things that are going to be taking place um, within our respective divisions and everything. But we, you know, kind of heard the feedback that we were receiving from the commission, and these are the two uh, alternative solutions that we came up with. So with that, I can answer any questions that you may have for, for me at this time. Thank you for this, uh, for these recommendations. Um, do we have any comments from the commission? Commissioner Gomez here. The only comment that I have, or not even a comment, just, I don't know if that's in your plan, but I would love to still know. So let's say we we follow those recommendations. We would still obviously love to know things that are happening in your department, even though it's not your turn to speak that month. Is that still gonna be communicated? So for example, if it's not your month to, um, present, but there's like a big event going on. Is that still going to be kind of communicated with us the month prior or that still month like in a paper form or how does that look like? Sure. On our off months. And I think I can turn to the, the rest of the, the team here and say on the, on the, our off months, we'll still present some type of staff report that will outline the events that will be taking place during the, the month that we wouldn't necessarily be presenting at that time. Of course. Any other questions on the commission or preference? So I believe the preference, for, um, our two options are to either have them staggered um, or to have quarterly updates. Is there any preference from the commission? Mm -hmm. I like um, the staggered updates, but I would still like to be informed as, as far as updates, um, events, anything that's happening so that we can also share that with other residents? Of course. I hope I like, agree with you too. I like the staggered, but if there's something important that we can not go and dwell into it, but just uh, mention it that's going on and we want to participate. The other element, I think this kind of goes into the conversation that we're having right now, is that 
like Susie and I would still come to the meeting. We just wouldn't have a report. So if the commissioners had questions or if they wanted to, you know, ask about a parks project or what's going on in recreation, we would still be available for questions or comments from the commission as well, too. I agree with the commissioner. I do like it staggered. And I do find that sometimes with all the information being um, presented at once, it becomes overwhelming to see what's going on in each department. So I, I go with the staggered um, recommendation. Thank you. I agree with them, especially since we're going to have two seniors coming to the commission. That's why I was kind of thinking how it's not going to be if we're going to be here for too long. So whichever it's helpful to you guys and it would be great with me. I guess, I mean, unless chairperson, do you have any comments? Yeah, um, no, I think um, I, I I like the, the staggered approach in terms of, um, you know, uh, presenting the information, um, but then uh, us knowing or the public knowing that this, this is the, these, this would be the time that would, we would have staff to maybe answer questions. Yeah. Um, I know that, um, you know, you may be able to answer generally, um, but I think I think I like that approach. Um, that way, you know, staff are able to be focused on, you know, their um, when they show up, they, they, you know, they're able to be prepared. Um, are, are we still thinking of um, monthly meetings in terms of um, the this new approach? Yeah, so the, the meeting will still take place monthly. It's just that on, you know, let's say, for example, next month, in July, the zoo and the library would be giving their presentations and then subsequently parks and recreation would be doing it in August. And so then you'd have that kind of syncopated approach. All of us would still be here to answer questions throughout the course of the meeting, but you would be getting a bulk of your information in terms of the reporting out from the respective divisions and departments um, in that staggered approach. I think that's great. I think that that's efficient and um, and uh, presenting the information in the agenda. I think um, all of it would be great. And then that way, um, if we have specific questions, I think we can follow up. But the staggered approach, I think, would be great. Okay. Uh, Recording secretary, do we need to take a vote on this? Um, do we have a motion on the floor? I, I believe the motion would be to, I can provide the, the motion is to um, pr um, have um, provide a uh, staggered division updates every 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 meeting with event updates throughout all of parks and rec including the library and the zoo yeah so it, it would be um I guess <laughs> to clarify the motion yeah it was to provide staggered uh division updates but include um uh, all the information in the agenda Chairperson and members of the commission. Um, so just so we are clear, we are going to vote on the staggered reports um, along the way. Also, if there's a need for any questions that come up for any special events or anything that staff will be available to answer those. And we also have executive director comments also at, at the end of each meeting as well. So you still would be able to get some sort of information for that. Great. I do have a, a first. I need a second. Second it. The roll call. Commissioner Matthews. Yes. Commissioner Torres. Yes. Commissioner, no, sorry, Commissioner Nelson is absent. Commissioner Wu. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Diaz. Yes. Chairperson Herrera. Yes. Duly noted. Great. Thank you so much. Um, great. Uh, next on the item is four. I'll turn this over to um, back to Tim, um, our, our um, Parks and Rec's uh, Community Services Manager, um, which is that uh, discussing the ad hoc committee required for meeting at the end time and recommending a name for the standard McFadden and Santa, uh, Santa Ana Dog Park. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, so we talked about this, I think, two meetings ago, and we established the members that were interested in being part of the ad hoc committee. Um, since that time, the Public Works Agency has turned over the naming of the Centennial Dog Park uh, as well to us. And just today, through our community engagement team, we went live 
um, with asking the public for to submit names um, via our website. Um, so we're looking for a date and time between na uh, now and our next meeting where the ad hoc can meet probably via Zoom. I mean, we can certainly have it in person too, but I think it's more effective and efficient to set up a Zoom call to where we can present the results of the, that survey to the ad hoc committee so that they can then go about uh, recommending a name for Standard and McFadden Park and also for the Centennial Dog Park to the Planning Commission, which we are trying to capture hopefully at the end of July. Um, but certainly we would make the um, August uh, Planning Commission meeting as well in, uh, if, if we weren't able to make July. From there, the Planning Commission would certify whatever recommendations you guys made um, and take that before the council sometime in September so that um, we can name those two sites for our future park and our future dog park. So I, for what I would need is, I guess, two things. Is the commission comfortable going with these three uh, commissioners um, to name those two parks or should we split that out? I, can, I think originally the ad hoc was created for Standard and McFadden, but now we have the opportunity for Centennial Dog Park. So do we want to have two ad hocs to um, address Standard McFadden and then one for Centennial? Or does any of the commissioners have any interest in joining this ad hoc? And then we would just essentially kill two birds with one stone at that point. Can, can I ask a question? Why is it that we can't all just vote on the names? Why is it too time consuming? Uh, it, in the it, past, I feel like with Mariposa Park, that's what we did. It was the all commission. It wasn't just few commissioners that chose. Uh, I think, you know, it was for the sake of time, especially the, the meeting, which I presented that <laughs> ad hoc idea. Um, also, um, the ad hoc, the last time that we named Wright and Myrtle, um, we had the Youth Commission actually participate. So there was members of the Parks and Rec Community Services Commission and the Youth Commission that came together. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to achieve a quorum in the Youth Commission for uh, at least the last couple of months. But we're also trying to coordinate with the Planning and Building Division because they have to rezone the parcel over at Standard and McFadden, and they want to kind of bring it all together at one Planning Commission meeting. And we kind of committed to them that we would have it done sometime during the summer, and our window of opportunity is kind of um, running out. So with regards to your question, I think the way that I initially presented it is I was going to go to the Youth Commission, get some members to be a part of the ad hoc for Standard and McFadden, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to achieve that because of a lack of a quorum at the Youth Commission. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So now that we're maybe possibly transitioning over, would it make sense to then have everybody have an input? If, if or, that's the I don't know what everybody else thinks. I mean, if that's the pleasure of the commission, then certainly we could set a meeting date and time, you know, but, you know, now between now and the next meeting so that we can vote on what the recommendations are um, so that we can, you know, essentially well i mean again maybe we are taking an extra step at this point and I'll, I'll rely on the recording secretary because if we were to present it at the next meeting it might be a little bit too late because again we have a small window of opportunity so the meeting that i would need would be between this one and our next one so that i can achieve you know um the voting taking place and then ultimately getting to the planning commission by the end of august at a minimum mm -hmm. Recording secretary, would that constitute another a special meeting that we would call? Thank you, Chairperson. So at an ad hoc committee, it's basically to just kind of deal with that uh, specific item, if you will. There is a specific number allowed for that where you can meet and kind of confer and decide on whatever the name is and then bring it to the full commission afterwards. Um, if you do decide to be a uh, part of that whole process, then it would be considered part of the meeting. So we would have to open it up to the public as well. So that's what an ad hoc committee does is to just three people that can meet, kind of decide on that particular item, and then bring it to the commission for a, a bigger decision making on that. And then if we wanted, um, as um, Commissioner Gomez is, um, I think, suggesting in terms of um, including the full commission, um, that would constitute a separate meeting, a special meeting? Well, I think the ad hoc committee would be where you, that, that committee would bring your decision and findings to the commission as a whole. For a vote in, in the July meeting? Cor correct. So depending on what the decision is, 
that particular ad hoc committee can bring it to this commission and talk about what was decided on. And then at that point in time, the commission as a whole can um, ask uh, how it came about and if there were other um, submittals or anything of that nature. Uh, Manager Pagano, would the meeting in July be too late? Uh, or next no, week? because ultimately, and I, I think I know where you're going, is ultimately if we were to agendize it for July and we came away with these are the recommendations of the Parks and Rec you know, uh, Commission, it would achieve the same thing, right? We wouldn't have to have the ad hoc committee at that point. It would just be agendized. We would bring forth um, the submittals that we have in place. And at that point, we can have a discussion and then we can take action to vote on what your recommended um, name for each of the locations would be. And then I would then take that in August to the planning uh, commission meeting with your recommendations. Is it um, so? I think, is it more than efficient to kind of uh, agendize it for July, or do you think that we should uh, do the ad hoc and then kind of meet again and or bring it forward in July? I think you know again, there's a lot of times where the recording secretary and I and executive director Scott are trying to find you know business items for for the commission and everything. Um, if we were just to put it on the agenda for next meeting and everybody was prepared to vote, you know, have a good discussion and then vote on what your recommendations would be, I think we could achieve that. And then what we would do at that point is we'd work with the planning commission to try to get on the August agenda so that we would meet our, our time frame that we're, we're looking to achieve. Any other suggestions from the commission so we can either host an ad hoc committee um, and then kind of discuss that there and then, you know, bring back that discussion in July um, or just kind of postpone that conversation um, till July. But I'm, I'm open to either. A lot of questions because people feeling and it takes more than just, oh, I see it meeting taking up a long time, an hour. But the last time I did, it took an hour and a half and I was listening to other people because I would set on my own name, you get kind of set <laughs> until you hear somebody else's and some of the significant issues that you had not uh, anticipated before. And, and so that discussion, you can really discuss it. And I think an ad hoc committee is that when it comes back to us, then we can get the the size of why they picked it out and everybody's ideas on it. Uh, I think it takes much more than just having a, a regular meeting to discuss it. Uh, and so unless we're going to be efficient, uh, I really feel it should be able to have more media. And I am fine with this oh, is on the list. I myself, uh, because I'm not in that area, I don't know the significance or how important it was important for me when I was. And I knew the significance, but I don't. So I would like to hear and everybody together. So I really would like to go to the end with the next set of parking recommendations. And I would like no ad hoc because I feel um, then our, all, not all the voices will be represented through the process. And I don't feel comfortable with that, that not everybody's going to have an input. We've done other parks in the commission and it did not take too long. It's not that hard. I mean, I feel we could get it done. So that's just personally, I'd rather it be everybody than just depend on three commissioners or two or three and just have their voices and then come to whatever they decide. I feel it's better if we all get represented. Commissioner Diaz? I think um, uh, Commissioner Gomez was not here the day that everybody, you know, kind of like voted as to who would want to be a part of it. So I think that it does, it's very important that when the commissioners, you know, to be here, because how about if Nelson comes back and he's going to say, oh, no, <laughs> you know, like we have to change it differently. So we're not going to meet the timeline. I go either way, which it's OK. If we want to add an ad hoc. It's OK. But if you don't, we don't want to add an ad hoc to me, it's fine. It's OK. But it, it is important for our commissioners to for our secretary to kind of reach out to them. And, you know, it's important for them to show up because that way we're on the same page and we don't have to repeat and go over the same thing. But I'm okay with either one. Commissioner San Matthews or Commissioner Zacarias Torres, do you have comments or preference? I'm okay with either, either having a, an ad hoc, which um, if we do 
go with the ad hoc. I would like to be a part of this. As, um, I'm right there. I do know the area quite um, well. I want to be a part of um, coming up with the names as well. But if we also do it uh, during our um, committee meeting, I'm okay with that as well. Or. Got it. Commissioner Zacarias Torres. I am okay including it into the agenda for the next meeting. Um, I feel like with your update that we have not been able to have uh, input from the Youth Commission. Um, and I feel like that's why the ad hoc would have been a good idea. But with the update of not being able to have uh, input from the commission, the Youth Commission, it kind of makes more sense to have uh, input from the whole Parks and Rec Commission and include it into the Parks and Rec agenda. Uh, great. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, I, think the, I think the benefit to now that we've kind of landed kind of, a, I think, in a general area is, you know, with the, your, the action that you took in the previous item, you're going to have a reduced time in terms of reports and everything like that. So that's just another factor, you know, for our next meeting and everything is that you will probably just have report outs from the library and the zoo next time. So the ability to have, you know, a good discussion about this topic and as staff, we can just make this solely our focus for the next meeting. And unless we have to add another business item that needs to be discussed uh, during the July meeting and stuff, but uh, we can, we can make that a single item agenda for, for um, the July meeting as well, too. Did you have comments? I have a quick comment. I remember um, that I think it was out there. You know, it was it was asked for, you know, excuse me. I think you put it out, I think, Instagram or Facebook asking for a name. It was out for a few days. I mean, do you think it, we can do it again just for a couple of days? Just for a couple of days and see what kind of input we get from the... From the, the we, we actually went live today. Um, so we plan on running it to the end of the month, correct? Okay. So that will give us at least two, you know, 10 days, two weeks to be able to gather. And I think we've already received one suggestion. So two now. Oh, excellent. So we're on a roll. Um, previously, you know, the, since the last time that I came here, you know, when I presented this item, we went to the community uh, or the neighborhood associations yes. and we presented at Pacific Park. We tried to get in contact with Madison. We tried to get in contact with, you know, Cornerstone Village. And out of all those discussions with the neighborhood leadership, we got no no responses in terms of the naming of Standard McFadden specifically because um, all three of those neighborhood associations share um, Standard and McFadden, right? So that's why we're pivoting to the social media aspect because we do have a good presence there. Um, so that's kind of our strategy now. That's great. That would be for both of them, both parts? Correct, both okay. parts. Yeah. I have a question. In relationship to the ad hoc uh, meeting, are those public? The ad hoc means, yeah, we would treat it the same way. Um, or is that more of like an internal? So an ad hoc committee it can be an internal. Uh, you would most definitely invite the public, but it doesn't necessarily have to follow the rules that we do for the typical commission meeting. Okay. And at that meeting, there would just be discussion on some of the um, the options that have been provided thus far. Yeah, we would go over the Santa Ana Municipal Code, um, while why the uh, selections that were before the commission or the ad hoc committee at that time were selected because they were in alignment with the Santa Ana Municipal Code. And then we would kind of give some background on what we knew about why the submission was um, put forward by a member of the community and everything. Um, so there was a little context and background on, um, for example, Puskas Park. You know, I think that's one that has been brought forward for the um, the dog park, and that's directly related to a canine um, officer that was, you know, killed in the line of duty and stuff. I don't think a lot of the public would know that just sight unseen, um, but we would be able to provide that uh, background information for the ad hoc or the commission, whatever the pleasure of this commission is. Great. I think um, based on the discussion, I my initial thoughts are to create the ad hoc committee. Um, and I think um, maybe splitting up the two. I know um, Commissioner Gomez is, um, uh, you know, I um, um, with the council member advocating for the Santana Dog Park. I think it would be good to kind of, you know, be a voice in that space. Um, but then I also recognize that maybe we do have more time um, at our regular meetings. And so um, 
I think for process, trying to incorporate more time for the discussion would be great. Um, at the moment, right now, we're just kind of up against the timeline. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, for for the, for this specific item, I think it would be great to kind of come back to the commission in July for a further discussion. Chairperson and members of the commission. So the original recommended action was to approve the following commissioners, uh, commissioners Herrera, Diaz and Torres to the ad hoc committee. So now that recommendation uh, has been changed. And what I have is uh, no ad hoc, but present to the whole body of the commission. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. So with that being said, I will need a first and a second and then a roll call. I will second it. You're going to get a first? I will first. Gomez, thank you. Second. I will second. <laughs> thank you, Anna. Sometimes it takes me a little longer to go back and forth, right? <laughs> All right, I'll go through uh, roll call here. Uh, Commissioner Matthews? Yes. Commissioner Torres? Yes. Commissioner Nelson? Commissioner Wu? Commissioner Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Diaz? Yes. Chairperson Herrera? Yes. Duly noted. Thank you. I was just being a little arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is our first I think, full yeah. discussion. <laughs> I think you recorded our first no vote of this commission, so that's pretty cool. Chairperson, uh, uh, duly noted with uh, one no vote uh, from Commissioner Wood. Great. Um, and for the public, please come to our next meeting to um, provide public comment on this item if you feel so inclined, please, we need help in helping to name our, our parks. And uh, next on the agenda, I believe, is a presentation from Man Manager uh, Pagano on community engagement. Well, I, it, like what we've done in the past, it's my pleasure to introduce our community engagement supervisor, Corey Lance. She's going to come up here and share with you her section's achievements. And uh, yeah, I would like to introduce you to Hello. Thank you, Chair and Commissioners. Um, and good evening. Thank you so much for welcoming to me, welcoming me this evening and lending me your ears. Um, I am very excited to, to be here and give a brief introduction and high-level overview of our section because I know it's new and different. And before I really kick us off and get into the meat of our section, I, I did want to take a quick moment to acknowledge the innovative leadership that came from both our executive director and recreation manager, Tim Pagano, for establishing this type of section. I have been working in recreation at other cities for many years, and I can tell you in from personal experience that when you are a recreation professional, you are very busy and you wear a lot of different hats. And when you are focused on your operations and making sure that your building isn't catching on fire or your senior services are operating and running on a day-to-day -day basis or making sure that that youth camp is having the doors open and you have staff to attend all of your, your youth, um, I can tell you that two weeks before a program, I have personally been in the seat where I'm thinking, oh, wow, I don't have a flyer. My community doesn't even know that I've just spent six months planning this program. So... I can also say that collectively, I think this is an issue for public service world in general, and the lack of awareness and knowledge that comes along with all the amazing programs and services that government offer is a, is a really common problem. So when I saw this position open, I was coming from a different city, actually took a demotion to come here because I believed in the type of work and find this to be extremely important. And I do, I, I know it sounds silly, but I just, I, I want to acknowledge our, our leadership for not only pushing something like this forward, but establishing an entire section devoted to community engagement. So thank you. I'd like to give you a round of applause. Wouldn't be with you guys. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, we can go on to the first slide. And before I kind of get into the meat of what it is that our section is really dedicated to, I'm going to talk you through what community engagement is. And really our, fo our focus is creating strategic and intentional processes that engage the community and then deepen our relationships with our partner organizations. Everything we're doing is intentional and we are trying to deliver services that our community actually wants and will participate in. And the goal of that is to provide positive and measurable community connections through those partnerships, digital accessibility, public information sharing, and then 
really supporting all of our amazing recreation services that currently exist. So let's go next slide, please. So <clears throat> the community engagement team um, really has outlined three guiding principles. Community engagement can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So for us, those three guiding principles are collaboration, communication, and consultation. So when we're talking about collaboration for us, really the, the main focus here is connecting with the community, getting feedback, and then building positive relationships. When it comes to communication, that's how we do that. <laughs> so for us, the main focus has been creating accessibility on digital platforms. Um, and then consultation. So a big part of community engagement that people don't recognize or realize that goes into this work is the analysis that's behind the scenes. So everything we're doing is extremely intentional, very strategic. There's lots of numbers, lots of stats that go into all the decisions from the little things to how many words are on a cover of an Instagram post to the way that we are writing our press releases and putting out the information onto our website. Next slide, please. Thank you. So with all of that being said, there's a lot that could potentially fit underneath this section. So with the leadership of our team, we have outlined five different main priorities for our community engagement team. The first is our cultura, a community connection guide. So our team takes on the main responsibility of curating, editing, building, and I'll go into each of these points more in detail as we go through the presentation, but the cultura, um, we have a huge effort right now to push online registration and really trying to get our recreation teams up to par with building recreation uh, program services online so that people can self-register. The next is our general external communication. Um, there's lots of different forms of this, and I'll go into this more in detail later, but website, mass communication, social media, all that stuff is built underneath external communications. The next is sponsorships and partnerships. Our team is responsible for building our deck. Um, this is a new responsibility that has transferred away from each of our individual sections. And the main partnership and sponsorship agreements are going to have a little bit more of an outlined feel. We'll be releasing our sponsorship deck here in two weeks. We're very excited about it. Um, but the goal is to actually build in a little bit more representation, not just for our events, which are not hard to find sponsors for, but really support our recreation services that are at our buildings and make sure that our senior programs and youth programs also have sponsors and food and all the exciting things that sponsorships bring to the table. And then the last is I think probably the most obvious that people think about when they come when they think about community engagement, but it's mostly the marketing efforts, um, branding, style guide initiatives, um, and then general community outreach. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm super excited to talk about the cultura. Um, I have been here for a little over six months now, so I have had the pleasure to help generate two of our publications. Um, the very exciting thing about our publications is it's not just one department, it represents our library, recreation division, and our zoo. So the other beautiful thing about this is that we don't actually sell sponsorships or ads, and it's purely a city publication, which is very rare in the world of recreation brochures. We actually don't like to call it a recreation brochure. We call it a lifestyle magazine because there are so many programs and services that we offer and are really proud of. Um, the other really exciting thing that was established is a subscription option, which is free to any of our community members who would like to start receiving it in the mail. To date, we now have 950 subscribers. The very exciting part about this though is we're not wasting paper. We're not overprinting. We have digital copies. Um, and we're only sending it to the people who have taken the step to register themselves. Um, hoping by the end of the year, we'll, we'll be at 2,000 subscribers, continuing to grow. Um, another big thing that I'm personally very proud of, I don't know if the rest of the world would probably recognize, I can tell you that my teammate um, Hiram would also be very proud of this, but all of the photos that you see in our magazines are actually taken by staff personally or submitted by our community. None of them are stock photos. And I can say that after my many years of being in the recreation profession, most brochures that you see are 90% stock photos. So for us, when we're talking about our culture, this is really truly a representation of the Santa Ana community. And then the, the other big part that I will tell you, the, the stats are still up in the air on this one, but we do actually have a Spanish version. Um, it's only provided electronically due to cost, 
Um, currently, you know, we've done two issues in Spanish. There's not a lot of visibility on the Spanish translation version online. Um, so we're not sure if we're going to continue this into the future. We're going to give it a couple more goes to see how many people actually are reading it. it does take a lot of time and resources to produce. So it is still up in the air, but I did want to bring that to your attention because it is, we're actually from, from my experience, I believe we're the only city that does multiple languages and recreation brochures. So that's also very exciting, but currently the stats are not showing the results that we are hoping for. <laughs> so, um, next slide, please. Okay, the next big responsibility of our team is driving some efforts towards pushing online registration for recreation classes. Um, that is the main source of information, Googling, looking up programs and services. And um, in the last six months, we've made a huge effort towards trying to drive that online registration. Um, part of, you'll also see in our cultura, all of our pages, all of our programs have digital QR codes that take our, our participants to the direct links to register for the programs. Um, so that's been a huge driving force. We have a lot of work to do on that front to make sure that all of our programs are listed, but um, there's always going to be work. So we're excited to continue that effort. Next slide, please. And when we're talking about uh, external communications, I know I mentioned briefly the different pieces that kind of go into this, but um, there's a lot of different components that go into external communications beyond just social media. That is huge. Um, but I can tell you that a lot of our time is spent on press releases and articles. We're also the main media point of contact for our agency. The website management also falls underneath our team. We've just gone through a huge restructure of our website. Still a lot of work to be done, but very excited about the accessibility, the language translations, the ease of being able to find your sections a little bit easier. Um, and then social media. I'm very proud of the efforts that we've made as a team on social media. We've grown over 60% in the last, I think, five months. Um, so we're really, really excited to see that growth and definitely for sure <laughs> tends to be our main source of contact with the community. So uh, social media has been a huge presence for us. Um, we're also really working on building a community, data, community database for mass communications, really trying to focus on efforts with mass emails, letting people elect into getting more information if they want. Um, we're also the direct liaisons to our city manager's public affairs team. So any content that is going to the council or to our city manager's office related to our agency filters through our team as well. So speeches, presentations, that kind of stuff kind of comes through us as well. All right, next slide, thank you. Okay, and recreation and um, sponsorships and partnerships. So I, I did mention this a little bit earlier that we are transitioning away from letting each of our individual sections find their own sponsors. For us, we are creating a tiered system that will give our outside partners an option to either be a per event or per program sponsor or transition to into annual partnerships, which we're really excited about. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this, if there's questions about it, I can definitely help answer. There's price brackets. We have two different options. Sponsors are not in person, um, but typically just want their logos on items. All agreements with sponsors do go through our city council for approval. And then partners are a little bit more involved. They have an in-person presence. Um, they have the option to give both financial and in-kind contributions rather than sponsors just giving financial contributions. And then the exciting thing about the partners is once you become an annual partner with us, you get to pick five of our regular events, standard events, and one of our premium events. And then we'll also have the option to participate in programs and workshops that will be offered at our recreation centers. So that is huge for some of our nonprofits. I have a couple of negotiations in the works behind the scenes I can't fully announce yet, but we're really excited about some of the potential partnerships that are coming down the pipeline soon. Next slide. And then again, this kind of touches on uh, the, the last piece for us, which is our outreach and marketing. I think, again, when people talk about our community engagement efforts, this is probably what people associate the most with us. So I've been very excited to, to give a little bit of a rundown of all the other things that kind of come along with our section. Um, but our team has worked pretty hard on creative, creating some cohesive branding. We've redone our style guide. Um, those are some color options for you. Each of our, our new sections have has been assigned colors. So hopefully to create some consistency that will translate onto the website and into the world of registrations. 
And then we're also responsible for all the marketing materials that you see. So uh, banners, posters, flyers, uh, social media, branding imagery, all that really goes through our team. And to kind of end us off, I this, those were our five points, but I did want to also acknowledge um, our team and hopefully excited to see us grow. We have Hiram here, who is our graphics designer, has done been doing amazing work for the city for over 25 years. Uh, but it's been really fun to have the opportunity to have a graphic designer in-house on team. And the work that he is producing is phenomenal. Um, we also have one part-time employee. His name is Oscar. Both of them have been your employees of the month in recent months. <laughs> Um, and Oscar works with us part-time. He assists with social media and all of really everything else that you've just heard. So um, that's our team. And thank you so much for letting us present to you. And I can take any questions if you have any. Thank you so much, Supervisor Lance. Thanks. Uh, any questions from the commission? Commissioner Gomez? I just have a question. I, I love everything you're doing. I really thank think you. it's amazing. I got my issues and they were really great. Thanks. I do have a concern of you taking it away in Spanish. And I just want to correct you. I, I came from the city of Anaheim. They have a bilingual for the uh, recreation brochure? Mm -hmm. I was with Parks and Recs. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. And so they do have Spanish and English. I think with okay. such a large population of Spanish, it would really, I, I wouldn't like to see that being cut. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only alarming thing that I heard from your presentation. Okay. Other than that, everything was really great. Thanks. I'm glad it's coming together. And thank you. I hope you're adjusting well and getting to yeah. know our community a little better. Yeah, I'm very excited. We'll definitely keep to track keep track of the stats. We're for sure planning on doing at least two more issues to see the response that we're getting. We're hoping that the community starts to engage with those Spanish editions a little bit more. Um, it's possible that just because it's so new and there's only been two editions in Spanish, it just hasn't been well received yet. Um, but just for representation to give the accurate numbers, um, we've had 50 views uh, for the last two issues in total in our Spanish edition collectively. So lots of time, lots of energy um, put into them. I also believe it's really important fought for making sure that we have it in Spanish, um, but we'll continue to do the analysis to decide the path forward. Mm -hmm. I'm also impressed, very impressed, as I stated before, that I had seen, I had gone to Orange and we were just for the last 10 years and I was always impressed to see why we didn't have anything of that and this is comparable and better than uh, Orange so I'm glad to see that and also the concerts are just getting better than Orange and so I'm staying <laughs> home now. I'll tell Monique that she'll be happy to hear it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but I am also concerned uh, about the Spanish speaking. I think we need to get it out there. And like you know, I was very concerned about the garden and getting more information out. And a book like this would really help people know that we have that and it's an opportunity for them to have it. So yeah, yes, I'm very impressed. Thank you. Very excited to to make sure that it's known that it's one of those things to be considered. Just for reference, um, we're always looking for advocates to help spread the word. But in the cover, we have two different QR codes. One is for subscribers to get it in the mail. This will always be on every issue. So for consistency purposes. So subscribing, also the Spanish edition is here in the QR code as well. So if people are looking for the Spanish, please let them know. We really want people to take advantage of it. It is here on this QR code here. <laughs> also, one last QR code. If, if people are wanting to submit photos, the back cover has been designated as a community submission. So it is always a photo that has been submitted to our team after review and will maintain to always be on the back cover. Any other questions from the commission, Commissioner Diaz? I just have a, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to um, comment again. Thank you so much for your presentation. I just love the fact that you're not using any stock pictures. It's yes. coming straight from the community. It's coming from your staff. Yes. So that's amazing. <laughs> We're really excited about Thank that too. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I have um, just a suggestion, maybe, if it could be possible for subscribers to to say if they want to receive it in English or Spanish? Would that be possible mm -hmm. for them to choose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the print editions for the Spanish is very cost prohibitive as oh. well. So that that is the, the constraint there. So I think once we see enough representation and enough interest in the Spanish editions, that could potentially become something we do in the future. But the cost of the magazines do have to go through mass productions. Um, mm, okay. so that, that is part of the, oh. there's, there's lots of details that kind of come into the production side, um, and timelines mm, and okay. deadlines for those things, but it is absolutely an option if we continue to get interest and feedback that that's something that the community okay. wants. You mentioned that, uh, people could scan a QR code to submit photos. Is that mm -hmm. also in this? Yes. 
the back cover. On the back part. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I would like to see also, I don't know if it's possible to add the QR code for the Vietnamese community, because if not, we're going to. Yeah, right. Right now, um, just again, the the production with such a small team, the production in multiple languages is oh, very extensive and mm -hmm. takes multiple weeks. Um, so Vietnamese is would be something we would consider down the line, but uh -huh. it's very easy to produce, you know, one or two page documents in multiple languages, but a fifty page magazine. It requires a lot of time. And in order to make sure that these go out on time, it would probably push back productions for at least a month to do a Vietnamese version as well. Maybe in the future, just so they don't feel that we're like, you know, excluding excluding absolutely. them. And then, you know, then we're going to start again. So, yeah. So it's yeah. not as well include. <laughs> absolutely. First step is getting people to read that Spanish version. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one idea since on um, doing outreach for the Spanish version, since our social media videos get a lot of views, mm -hmm. do you think that we could make a, a video promoting the Spanish version? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, also, I'm not sure if it's been updated, but on the mobile uh, page to register for um, like field trips or outings, um, I was helping a family and. I was not able to change to Spanish. Do you know if that's available? Because on the desktop mm -hmm. version, you are able to change mm -hmm. the language to register, but not yes. on the mobile site. I can look into it and we can figure out doing a tutorial if we need to. It should be on the bottom right hand side on like a Google Translate button. Yes. Okay. I'll look into it and I can follow up with, with Manager Pagano and send an update. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for the information. I think our social media game and just communications has been like super good, you know, thank in terms you. of just trying to reach um, an online audience. I um, I commend you and your department for their work and and really putting us like on the map. Thank um, you. Folks in Costa Mesa are, are telling me, council members <laughs> are telling me they're like your Parks and Recs is better than ours. And <laughs> I'm like, yes, it is. You know? um, thank you. So um, I think um, some of the questions, some of the things that came up for me in terms of um, park uh, reservation and maybe the fees. I know you mentioned um, mm -hmm. management of the website for Parks and Rec. So mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit more, um, you know, out there. So then I know some other cities have um, yeah. more um, access. It's just like, you know, that we don't have to call and it's just like, it's all yeah. there. So I think I would just, as, as a suggestion, um, I think it would be good to um, to um, uh, honor like our sponsors and partners and kind of see, you know, who they are. I know mm -hmm. that, um, you know, they're um, they're prefer specific events, but if they're like on the Web page or, mm -hmm. you know, these are our top three sponsors of the year. Yep. I think that would be all great. of our with a new deck that's coming out, all of our annual partners and sponsors. There's going to be a new page to recognize all the annual sponsors. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. No, because I think that they help help um, push out our programming. They really do. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I really agree. I think um, with the Spanish um, uh, magazine, I know it's a little difficult for folks to, you know, for, for for it to kind of be picked up. I was just thinking about, yeah, working with our partners. I know like Northgate, you know, is uh, that's where the Pueblo is, you know, and so to the extent that we're partnered with them to host a little a bit of the magazines there, I guess the English ones, but then promoting um, our Spanish virtual. Um, I know maybe like um, on Instagram, it's like, you know, 10 pictures. Mm -hmm. So maybe like a condensed Spanish only post mm -hmm. with like 10, you know, these are the next, you know, thing, events that are kind of coming up. So it's like Spanish specific or putting the Spanish post like at the top versus mm -hmm. like the English post. Maybe that will help like, um, you know, push cast, some readers. Yeah. Push yeah. the readers. Yeah. So it's like, I think that that would, um, yeah. Um, yeah, like 10 pics of um, the, the Cultura magazine, I think. And follow more here, download the magazine or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I, I really appreciate y'all's work. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. Um, we are almost coming out, uh, coming up on time, and we will have two of our commissioners step out, but we will continue having our meeting. Um, next on the agenda are informational items, and so no action is needed from the commission on these items. However, this is a time for the city staff to provide a brief summary of their reports and for commissioners to ask questions. 
uh, if we have uh, Director Sternberg for our library staff report. Uh, prior to that, oh, yes. Hey, Brian. I just wanted to say that you know, we have, uh, we might be looking, while you guys are all here, to possibly changing our Parks and Rec Commission day, time, or something, because it seems like this one does run into a lot of issues with, especially with Comlink. And, you know, so just, just a heads up, we're looking into it, what would need to be done, and then we'll probably come back soon with you know, some possible recommendations of what we can do to that. So it could maybe move earlier in the week, could move maybe you know, a week before, stuff like that. Because currently our charter does say the fourth Thursday, but we do have the ability to move it if we feel needed. And that was a couple uh, comments that came up to me during the mayor's uh, city of the uh, uh, address, state of the city today. So just wanted to, before you guys had to get out of here, that we are looking into it. Great. I think that that would be um, great, even looking at our meetings in, I know, November and December run into holidays and so we usually don't have meetings those days. Uh, thank you so much. Commissioner Diaz, Commissioner Ruth. Uh, Director Sternberg. All right. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. Um, I'm here to uh, give you some um, great updates about our library services agency here at the city of Santa Ana. The first thing I want to tell you about is an exciting new item that is a part of our Library of Things collection. And um, visitors to the Santa Ana Public Library can now check out blood pressure monitoring kits to measure their blood pressure at home, thanks to a joint effort with the American Heart Association. As champions of health equity, the Santa Ana Public Library and the American Heart Association are addressing drivers of health disparities, including barriers to quality health care, which, as we know, is a, uh, a reality in this community and in many other communities. And we're doing this by launching the Libraries with Heart Initiative, which is an American Heart Association initiative right here at the Santa Ana Public Library. So partnering with the American Heart Association will allow anybody who has a Santa Ana Public Library card, which is free, just come into the library and get it, or you can go online and get it as well, uh, access to these blood pressure monitoring kits. We have 10 of them available just to start out as a pilot. If we see a good interest in that, the American Heart Association definitely will provide us with more if they start getting low and we need you know, to fill those uh, holes and uh, whatnot. So people will be able to uh, take their blood pressure monitoring kits home, accurately uh, monitor and understand their blood pressure numbers. Um, and they will also, when they check this out, uh, per get provided information about accesses to resources and how to control and manage their blood pressure and connections to clinical care. So those are all provided. Uh, blood, blood pressure monitoring kits will be blown out to library patrons, as I said, through our Library of Things collection. As we all know, public libraries are important community partners when it comes to improving health literacy. When we think about public libraries, sometimes we just think about, you know, old fashioned literacy, the type, you know, reading and writing, but there's lots of other kinds of literacy. There's financial literacy, there's health literacy, and that's kind of what we're discussing here today. So we're proud to partner with the American Heart Association to make health equity a priority here in Santa Ana. And we're proud to partner uh, and collaborate with community uh, agencies like the American Heart Association to improve health literacy across the community. Blood pressure monitoring kits are available. Um, will and supporting programs will be available beginning in August, 2023. So we're gonna do a launch. There's gonna be more information on this to come, but we're gonna have a great event that features our library of things, as well as uh, this uh, new addition to this collection, which is our blood pressure monitoring kits. The next thing I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about tonight is our Pride Month celebrations. So June is Pride Month and uh, the Santa Ana Public Library is celebrating with special programming and events. Join us for these free events and programs to explore illuminating resources and discover a wide selection of recommended reads in different genres uh, selected by our librarians and our library staff. These engaging programs are for all ages. Events include an exciting discussion with author and culinary personality, Ronnie Wu, who makes regular appearances on the Today Show, Netflix, and Food Network. 
Our teens and adults can also participate in a Cricut machine workshop to personalize, to personalize a Pride Tumblr Club. Cricut machines are kind of like um, printers that you connect up to your computer or um, iPad or tablet. And essentially they provide you with kind of a, um, a, a design a uh, platform of software where you can cut lots of different things like fabrics and stickers and things like that. So it's a, it's like a printer that cuts and designs, you know, so it's a perfect way to, uh, you know, decorate and it's a very uh, big crafting tool. So we're, we're happy to, to do that program. And then uh, patrons can also uh, attend a program where they can make rainbow string art while learning about our vibrant collection of LGBTQ books for, for all ages. Uh, and finally, our youth and their families can learn how to use creative technologies to create glow-in-the-dark works of art to take home and create and explore with our Extreme Lab Crayon and Melting Art Program. So join us for these colorful and vibrant activities to help our community explore and understand more about Pride Month. And then finally, I just want to give another plug to our summer reading program, uh, 2023, which is uh, titled Find Your Voice. Um, I know I mentioned this last time, but I just want to uh, encourage everyone again, our summer reading program is for all ages. We have programs for teens. We have programs for that are catered towards adults. And we, of course, have programs that are some reading programs catered to which people think of them as the more traditional audience, our children. But it's really for all ages. There's great prizes to win along the way. You can sign up um, online through a platform that we use called Beanstack, or you can come into the library and do it the old fashioned way right at our, at our front desk. So please uh, spread the word, help us um, celebrate our summer reading program here. It's really kind of that bridge once kids get out of school. It's a great way uh, for not just kids, everybody, uh, including adults, lifelong learning to continue learning throughout the summer months. So uh, that's all I have uh, besides our list of uh, June 2023 programs, uh, kind of a wrap up as I um, always provide you with what we've done each month. So with that, I am here to take any questions. Any questions or comments from the commission? Uh, Director Sternberg, thank you so much for um, partnering with the American Heart Association. My father um, has high blood pressure. And um, he's uh, unfortunately was deported. He's in Rosarito right now. Um, but uh, he, you know, I went to go visit him. And that's the first thing, one of the things he asked me to go buy him was, um, um, you know, the, the blood pressure monitoring kit. And so I bought it for him. But um, had he been here, you know, this is, I know that there's so many folks here with, um, that do live with high blood pressure. And um, it is a health disparity. And so um, being a low income community, you know, I, I, I welcome um, um, publicizing this, you know, in our for folks and, you know, had my dad been here, I think I would have checked it out for him, you know, but thank you so much for providing this and highlighting this, this type of intersection. Thank you. I, um, I wanted to also um, thank you so much for um, highlighting uh, Pride Month and being so creative in uh, trying to, uh, I think that's great that you're, uh, you know, we're, we're being creative in the activities that we're doing to bring up those discussions to be like, hey, we have books here to continue that dialogue. Um, I know the city of Huntington Beach is um, considering discussions of what we should and shouldn't have at our library, um, including LGBTQ literature, and they find it obscene. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, for us, uh, you know, we do such a great job of, uh, you know, having this type, these types of uh, literature, having LGBTQ books, literature, authors in our library is not obscene. And I think that we should, we should continue to, I'm glad that uh, I serve on a, uh, on a commission for a city that continues to uh, be on the forefront of having our, pri our pride flag raised, you know, uh, while other cities and municipalities around us continue to you know, uh, downplay uh, LGBTQ uh, folks in our community. So thank you so much for, um, for, the, for these events. Thank you. And um, that's all I had to say. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Um, next on the agenda, uh, we have a um, parks and facilities report from our parks planner, uh, Suji Ferjanek. Good evening. It's Hi, great Susie. to see everybody again. 
<laughs> so I restructured our parks, our park services report a little bit. Um, I added a section to the front under parks master plan um, because I wanted to show how we are being very proactive in implementing it. So in the parks master plan, there were 12 action items identified. And um, that is what I included in the report. And I also included some um, explanation of what we've been doing in response. And um, this is a really good cross check for us um, to, to make sure we are on task and we are. Um, the first, and I'll just go through these quickly. Uh, the, but the, I do wanna um, spend a few minutes on the, the first item, prioritizing maintenance and asset management. So since the parks master plan was adopted last year, um, one of the biggest things that we did was hire a park superintendent, George Acevedo. And I really wanna do a shout out to him um, because over the past year, he's he's done an amazing job. And the park maintenance division has really, there's been an investment there. Um, he's been a great leader. He's been um, building his staff, mobilizing, reorganizing, and really, you can see the difference out there in the park system. Um, one of the things that he's done is he's um, he, he's been able to put eight service contracts um, into effect. Um, and they really, really make a difference. Um, skip ahead a little bit here. Um, the biggest one being the security. Um, contract that we have in place now. Um, Lion Security has been doing an amazing job and um, we're getting a lot of really positive feedback um, that it is being uh, effective. Um, we, he, he got, um, has contracts now for, for pool services, lake management, pressure washing, tree trimming, playground rubber surfacing, sports court resurfacing, synthetic turf maintenance, all these contracts make it easier to stay on top of maintenance. And he is systematically going through the parks and doing turf renovations. He is uh, replacing the rubber surfacing on all the playgrounds, um, resurfacing all the sports courts, the basketball courts, the tennis courts, all those things make such a big, you know, replacing the fencing around the ball fields, replacing the fencing around um, the the tennis courts. You know, for years it's been that galvanized um, um, steel silver fencing, and and it's being upgraded to a a, a black tighter um, weave. And it it just it's really starting. You know, all these things are really starting to um, collectively um, raise the bar. So um, and and. It, and it's it's the investment was notable. I you know spoke at the last um, meeting about how the trust for public land uh, increased our score um, five points, and a lot of that has to do with with the investment that has been made. Um, second item um, in our action plan was to increase park impact fees for new development. That's underway. We're working with our. Um, our partner agency with or partner division um, within public works to retain a consultant to ex, uh, um, assess all of the fees, um, park um, residential development fees for uh, um, monies to um, dedicate to um, acquisition. Um, so that is that is something that we're going to be. It'll probably take a year to go through the process um, to analyze, um, but that is underway. Um, increased funding for for parks. Um, our division's been actively pursuing grants this year. Just in the past month since I last was here, we submitted five applications. Um, um, we requested two and a quarter million dollars for construction of 10th and Flower Park. We requested a, a little over a million dollars um, from the U U.S. Forestry Service to do a 
urban forestry plan, um, we requested um, $3.7 million from the U.S. Department of Transportation to implement electric vehicle charging stations at seven um, of our park sites. Um, we submitted um, an application for $1.2 million to um, the state recreational trails program to add um, trail lighting um, at the Pacific Electric Bike Trail. And we also submitted a, an application to the state, um, $1.6 million for Santiago Park Phase 3 construction, which is um, the east end of the park uh, trail and, and, and habitat uh, renovation. And we have one more to submit this month um, also. So we've been, we've been very busy um, and breathing a sigh of relief now that it's all, all behind us. It was, it was, um, it was quite crunchy. Um, um, explore voter approved tax measures and other public and private support. So we've been meeting weekly now for a couple of months, um, jointly the um, parks, library, zoo to build a case statement to present to the city manager um, to ask for her consideration in allowing us to maybe take some step, steps to do some opinion polling uh, to see if a, a tax incentive or park bond would be successful um, in the city. We need a revenue stream. We want to raise the bar. We're, we're doing great work, but we could do so much more and there's so much more that needs to get done. Um, but we need a we need a better revenue, dependable re, um, and, and better revenue stream in order to do that. So um, we're excited that we're going to um, make that presentation next week um, to her and have our fingers crossed that we're going to get the green light to maybe move, move forward with the first piece. Um, create a park op opportunity fund. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is um, trying to be more disciplined about preserving that A&D funding for acquisitions so that when opportunities present themselves, we are able to um, take advantage. Number six, pursue key land acquisition opportunities. There are five sites um, that we are, actually four, four acquisitions that we've done over the past year. Um, we purchased um, a, um, a group of, par two groups of parcels on Bristol Street. Um, one is um, at Tolliver, Bristol and Tolliver. One is slightly north, Bristol at Myrtle. We we purchased 2.49 acres in partnership with the water department at First Street and Mountain View and um, purchased one, um, eight, eight, eight parcels at 10th and Flower Street so that we could create a new one, one acre park site there. So we've, we've, we've made some gains over the past years. Um, Number seven, develop the Golden Loop and key trail corridors. Uh, we have um, uh, what's been branded as the Golden Loop bike trail. Um, the concept, the vision has been around for decades. Um, we want to work harder to close the gap. Um, we have a meeting with um, our traffic engineering division next week to kind of see what, what we're at and what the plan is going forward to, to close those gaps. And once we do that, we do want to brand it. Um, we want to go after funding to to brand it and celebrate it and 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 um, maybe have some events getting people out there to introduce them to it. Uh, number eight, evaluate additional park acquisition opportunities. So I listed some additional sites that we're looking at. Um, um, everything everything is is uh, a wish and a promise at this point. Um, there is we're gonna take it to the next level and, and dig deeper and, and look at that um, gap map that's in the park master plan, look at those disadvantaged areas, see what other um, possibilities there are. This is gonna just be a continual work in pro process, but we're the what's on here right now is kind of the low hanging fruit. Um, number nine, um, explore other acquisition mechanisms as an alternative to direct purchase. That's something that we need to have conversation about. Um, Number 10, update joint use agreements with uh, Santa Ana Unified School District. I believe um, 
there are discussions happening right now to to uh, create a master joint use agreement and um, take a look at um, what we have, what we can be doing, and and how to um, uh, build a better relationship and 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 create um, expand on our opportunities. Number 11, evaluate the return on investment before proceeding with major facility development. Um, this is something that um, we will just make part of our standard practice. We will be doing this in tandem with um, any park acquisition considerations um, that we um, have on the table. And number 12, extend cost recovery recommendations to new programs and services. Again, this is something that we um, need to start the conversation on. So um, I think we've we've made a pretty good start for the first year and um, want, want to keep at it. A um, couple things in the report that I want to highlight. Um, one thing that I'm super excited about is the new park at Standard and McFadden Avenue is officially out to bid. And um, the bid opening date is July the 13th. So we should see a groundbreaking sometime in the fall. Park's finally happening. Um, another exciting thing, today we reviewed 12 proposals from 12 very excited firms that want to work with us to build a new aquatics facility at Memorial Park. We shortlisted the proposals to four firms, and then we're going to be interviewing them on July 12th, making a selection taking it to council, I believe the first meeting in August and kicking off the design process. And our goal is to have um, uh, completed plans by next April so that we can advertise and break ground next year. I think that are the highlight, those are the items that I wanted to highlight for tonight. So in, in um, the spirit of trying to move things along, I will close there. And any questions for Susie, Executive Director? Yeah, I just wanted to add, and while Susie's up there, just want to bring up the last time we talked about doing the park tours, and we did settle on two dates, but we didn't ever have a confirmation on what dates we wanted to do. And um, Hiram does, if you want, I believe, did we share them this map? With Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you guys get a chance, you know, this is the uh, park we did um, talk about and we did confirm that this is what you guys wanted to do, but we never got a date. And are we looking for a time as well? Yes. As well as a time. So I don't know if that's um, chairman, if you want to maybe discuss that real quick while we're all here. Great. Yes, I think that's um well, yeah, thank you, Susie, for uh, the presentation and uh, for developing the, the parks tour for us. I believe at our last meeting, we recommended to have all these stops uh, for, um, and I, I, we did table it for today to kind of have that vote. I know two of our, three of our commissioners are gone, but hey, we have to continue. And so I think um, for the four of us, I mean, that that is quorum to kind of have that meeting to be attending for, this would be in August, um, this tour. So um, is there any specific weekend in August that works for you all? Yeah, uh, Chair Perry, we did have August 12th and August 19th um, set aside, but we never had a consent, so which one? Both days work for me. I'm fine with either date. Thing. Either day is fine. Both days also were for me, right. but I believe it was Commissioner Wu that had um, what she preferred one day over the other. Okay, I guess can uh, Bill, can we reach out to Commissioner Wu and see what date towards back? And I guess we can email the commission and set a date. Affirmative. Okay. All right. I'll pour you clear. Good. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any specific questions for Susie and her, uh, her report? I just want to say thank you. It seems like you've been very busy, and we appreciate you. <laughs> the labor of love. <laughs>
Thank you. Um, if if we are able to close the bike trail loop, when do you think that, that would what would be the time frame on that? Um, that is a question I'll probably be able to answer better at the next meeting. As I said, we have a meeting with traffic engineering next week, not knowing exactly how we're going to close the loop. Um, hard to answer. Um, I'd like to do it sooner than later. Um, that's my goal. So if I can um, defer and let you know, because I'd like to know too. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really looking forward to seeing that happen. Me too. Thank you. Great. Um, um, Susie, um, I, I, I think, um, or um, executive director for the, the master joint use agreement, is that um, including the library or is it just the specific parks? No, the, so it's with the city of Santa Ana and the school district, and it includes any facilities and buildings that we may want to deem. So, I mean, but for the most part, it'll be facilities such as, you know, our, our athletic fields, parkings, and then maybe some buildings if, if needed to have some joint use. So again, it's, it's a work in progress, but again, we've made huge leaps and bounds with our teams and they do meet every month. So hopefully soon, because I believe a lot of them are still on summer break. Next, yeah. Yeah, I was mentioning libraries because I think um, specific to Pride, uh, for instance, we do have a large selection of LGBTQ books. And so trying to see if we can bring those collection of books to the high schools, for instance. So I'm trying to think if there's like um, where to bring up that conversation. Is it at the joint school and the city council collaborative or, you know, have the school board initiate those conversations? We have a, um, the bookmobile. So I'm just, I'm trying to, um, you know, how do we, uh, uh, it might be difficult for the youth to come to the library. And so if we're able to mobilize, you know, LGBTQ books, Juneteenth books, you know, any type of literature, I think. Um... Got it. Okay. Great, great. Okay, thank you. I wanted to just clarify. Um, I did uh, communicate with our executive director um, about um, um, our ribbon cutting ceremony for Santiago Park and uh, being able to invite uh, OC Habitats. And uh, as soon as we get a, a date locked in, I think we, you know, we can uh, invite OC Habitats. They've been out to Santiago Park um, three or four times now um, and uh, with, in collaboration with uh, Mira Pro Temp Lopez, um, myself and uh, OC Habitats to cl clean up the, the park. So I think it would be great to invite them. And um, I, I think, thank you on the tour, Susie. I think um, I know you'll be gone next month. And so um, to the extent that maybe we can get like um, a flyer for this specific event to maybe promote it on our social media, um, I think would be great for um, you know, for the public to be aware of this uh, public event. And I think that's pretty much the only thing I see. I know um, the the mode of transportation, I know we discussed maybe parks and recs uh, uh, for us to be in, in a van together to kind of be driven around the city, you know. And so I think for the public to be aware about like their option, you know, either to drive themselves or if there's room in the van or, you know, I, I sure, I'm sure you all will help figure that out, you know, but I think to the extent that, we're able to at least publicize the locations of where we'll be, um, then that way the, the public can follow us along or come along with us. But, you know, I leave it up to you. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Yes. Thank you. And en enjoy your well-deserved break. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Susie. Thank you so much. Um, I believe now we have our zoo manager, um, Ethan Fisher, to provide the zoo report. Good evening. Um, happy June. Uh, 
So I'll, I'll go through the report, some updates on the zoo. I usually start with some animal updates. We uh, acquired a few new goats recently this month, um, some different breeds than we have before. So as soon as they finish their quarantine period, they'll be able to start engaging with the public. Um, this has been a busy time for us as we rolled out of uh, the school year and into summer camps. Uh, quite busy during the week and we're again um, having groups visiting from all over the place. We had um, school groups and, and camps coming from Hemet and Paris and West Covina and um, a pretty pretty far. When you look at a map, there's not a lot of places like, like our zoo that are um, close by those, those communities. So they come all the way here to, to experience our zoo. Um, and it just, uh, it's a little reminder, like what we have in our backyard. Uh, something, a little update on the uh, San Diego Park, the, the nature center, the eco center. Uh, City Council awarded a contract to Color Ad. That's a, they went through a RFP, a selection process. Um, we evaluated a number of different firms uh, that were all really, really great firms that do museum um, interpretive exhibits. And that's the intent of that contract is to uh, put some a new, really snazzy uh, museum interpretive interactive exhibits and some animal displays inside the that facility so that as it's open to the public to start coming in there, there's uh, interesting things to do and spend your time and see. Uh, and we are in the process right now of hiring the staff. Um, we're going through the interview process so that we can hopefully get it open uh, pretty soon. But this exhibit process, designing these, that will take some time, about a year for the design and then a year for construction and installation. Um, but we'll have the, the building open before that, much before that. Uh, really neat event coming up tomorrow night, if you're available, Zootopia at the zoo. Um, there's bounce houses, entertainment out in front of the out in front of the zoo starting at 530 and then you're welcome to come inside we have I think there's a churro truck and a taco truck and a big giant screen the first time we've ever done one of the movies at the zoo so uh, this will be hopefully well attended and in a great event for everybody also one other event coming up really soon that I forgot to put on here on June 30th the Red Cross is having a blood drive. They have a blood mobile. It'll be in the parking lot of the zoo and they're taking online uh, appointments. And uh, I think they hope to get about 18 people to donate blood. And I know as they do a lot of different blood drives, they um, have tickets to Knott's Berry Farm and other promo things to encourage people to participate and donate. Um, operations wise, uh, we briefly mentioned it at the last uh, last meeting, but uh, on Tuesday night, the city council, um, they had a receive and file item uh, with an update on the zoo's deed, the deed from 1952, and also an update on our master plan. Um, so that was the deed change, removing the 50 monkey requirement from the zoo. And then also in the master plan update, uh, we talked about focusing on our new development project in the future, the primate forest, which would redevelop the oldest area of the zoo where the original zoo um, from the 1950s, where all the monkeys live right now. So we always wanna honor that heritage, but this flexibility does uh, enable us to really focus on providing the best home possible for the animals we have and more flexibility to implement the master plan and have some other species in the future too. Um, Goat Trails project continues to move along. Uh, that one is, uh, right now, the construction schedule has it ending in the, uh, the end of August, so we're excited about that. There's some other projects in the works in the planning phase still. Uh, the education building, the accessibility project for the pathways, I've mentioned that. Uh, something that the recreation and the zoo are working on together recently, we have a concessions uh, RFP that's out for bidding right now. We did a job walk last week and that would provide concessions at the zoo, um, poten potentially at San Diego Park and then also at the stadium. So we'll see what comes back as far as bids with that. Uh, it's something that we do for the zoo every few years and the stadium hasn't had a concessions for, for also a few years. Um, 
Mm. Other other events coming up, Brew at the Zoo. Um, yeah, that's coming up pretty soon. That's next month, July 28th, um, Friday night. Uh, if you're looking for something to do, it's 21 and over, $65. You get a discounted rate as a Santa Ana resident. Uh, there's right now, I think we have 16 breweries that are signed up. You get a commemorative glass when you come in and you can sample all different types of beer. It is a highly curated, uh, group of breweries. I will say we have a number of different breweries represented from Santa Ana, Servicito that's in downtown and Congregation Ale House, they're coming and a number of really, really good, uh, high quality breweries from the region and, uh, even some from a little bit further away. So that should be a, a great event that we're really looking forward to. And um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions from the commission? Well, thank you so much for the report. Um, I think it's um, um, <laughs> Zoom Manager for sure. Um, I think uh, that's very exciting that we're redeveloping um, the Santiago Park Eco Center. And, um, you know, I think uh, it, it'd be great. Uh, I think providing, if possible, options with design, you know, I think uh, providing feedback for that, I think is always great. It's exciting for the commission to provide feedback uh, on things like those. And um, including the Hive, I know that uh, you may be towards the end of that, but if possible as well. Well, the Hive actually hasn't started yet, um, so the next step would be awarding the uh, contract to uh, at City Council for uh, hiring the architectural firm to go into the concept and, and the design phase. So there's still time. Yeah, so we haven't actually started designing yet. Yeah, the next step is to hire, we're hiring the company to do the design. To do the design. Okay, yeah. that's great. That's great. Um, and um, I, I really um, think, I think the concession stands with um um, alcohol pouring as a part of the concessions is is great. I think for uh, parents and um, twenty one yeah. and over People adults. Request yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the San Diego Zoo has uh, has this option, and um, you know I think that this is great um, for for attracting folks to come to our zoo. Um, no, I think um, I, I think I do have plans to come to um, the brew at the zoo, and um, I look forward for our commissioners to also be there as well. Uh, okay, no other comments. Thank, Thank you. you so much, the manager. Thank you. Um, uh, next, we have our um, Parks and Recs uh, manager, uh, Tim Bogano. Thank you again, Chairperson, Commission. Um, I'm going to try to encapsulate all of summer and everything that's been going on in hopefully like 10 minutes. So we'll, we'll try our very best. But um, since the beginning of summer on June 5th, your recreation division has been doing phenomenal stuff. Um, there's, I, there's a little words to be able to able to capture all the effort that has been made to in our first full summer back um, last year. I, I think I was very intentional about sharing that we were going to slowly in, and incrementally build up our program back to what it was during pre pandemic time. And summer uh, of this year was going to be the year where we we're going to have 100 percent programming and we are achieving that. Um, and that's in large part to all of our supervisors, all of our section teams. Um, and um, the work of uh, the Recreation Department. Uh, a couple highlights. Um, uh, Manager Fisher mentioned Zootopia, which is tomorrow, which is a joint uh, movie in the park. We're looking forward to that. Um, the following uh, Friday will be Beauty and the Beast at El Salvador Park. Um, last weekend, we, uh, cel we celebrated Juneteenth. Um, for the second year for providing that event in collaboration with the Orange County Heritage Council. And it was a great event. Um, it was a little bit warm considering that for the first four, the first four weeks of summertime, we were enjoying overcast and about 68 degrees and stuff. It ended up being like 82 degrees out there. But um, other than that, we had great headliners, um, a lot of uh, different cultural aspects that were shared with the community um, and a great deal of vendors that came out to support the event. And we're very happy for um, the end result. We anticipate, we estimated that we had about uh, over about 1100 um, uh, residents come out to celebrate with us uh, on Saturday of last week. 
Um, upcoming in terms of special events, we have the July 4th uh, fireworks celebration, which is taking place Tuesday, July 4th. That will be at Centennial Park. Um, the event will start at 5 p.m. And I think we just went out with some of our marketing um, in the last couple of days. So um, we're looking forward to the community to join us um, to celebrate. We'll have fireworks. Uh, we even have a patriotic pet contest this year, which I'm really excited about. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a good community event. We'll have a couple bands that will be joining us. Um, you remember the, the Smoking Cobras, right? The Smoking Cobras and Chico Band will be there and they will be performing uh, leading up to the fireworks. And then the fireworks show will happen just after twilight. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, we are preparing right now for Chicano Heritage Festival, which is uh, scheduled for Sunday, August 27th at El Salvador Park from 11 to 4 p.m. Um, we had a very success, successful event last year. We estimated that we had about 6,500 people join us at El Salvador, and we're preparing for a much bigger event because of the uh, popularity of um, what we saw last year. Some elements that we're going to be including um, that weren't there last year is we are going to have a cruising element this year. And we're really excited about introducing that to this particular event. We've already had preliminary discussion with some car clubs. Um, we are planning on shutting down half of Civic Center and parking all of those beautiful cars on Civic Center. Um, most of our entertainment has already, we're already in discussion and close to executing agreements. So once we execute those agreements, we'll be able to share um, who those headliners are. We're going to have carnival elements this year, which we're really excited about. I know Council Member Hernandez is very excited about that. Um, the, I guess in in the past, there's been a pretty successful carnival at El Salvador Park. So that will also be featured on that day. Um, and just a whole lot of other um, elements that will add value to the event. Um, one of the things that we're really interested in, I know Bill's been um, working uh, closely with, is one of the uh, members of the El Salvador community, Jackie Robinson, actually approached us probably about a year ago. And he wanted to, on his own, create a plaque for all the recreation leaders that came out of El Salvador Park. And he showed it to us probably about a month ago. And, you know, he's got all of the recreation leaders that are being, I guess, memorialized and just, you know, a level of appreciation. And we've worked with him to where he will be inviting those individuals to the Chicano Heritage Festival. And we will uh, seek to honor them during the festival and just pay them tribute for all the contributions they made to the city and specifically that park as well. So we're looking forward to that element as well, too. Um, some section reports, community education, our Kids Night Out um, program on May 19th had 52 participants in a mad science program where they got lab coats and goggles and did a bunch of science activities, which was really, really popular. It actually yielded, we were overbooked because we usually have 50 kids per night and we, we accepted 52. Our summer day camp program, um, I know that Specifically in our community education section, there was a lot of work that was done there. Um, historically, our summer camp program has had anywhere between 25 and 35 spots. Um, each one of our sites this year at Jerome Salgado and El Salvador increased that uh, participation number to 50. And in week one, we had 98 participants. In week two, we had 114. And in week three, we had 123. So our numbers are increasing. And the way that we reformatted it to where it's a summer splash day camp, you know, participants for $100 prior to July 1 and $110 because of the miscellaneous fee adjustment um, post July 1, they get 55 hours of care. They get access to special presentations, arts and crafts, games, swim lessons, recreation swim. They have lunch that's provided through the school district. And then they get to go on an, a major excursion every Thursday. So for the the you know the value for the dollar that our parents are committing and everything, our, our participants are really enjoying that program, and we're seeing our numbers increase uh, week over week. With regards to our aquatics program, which was brought in house um, over the for the first time in several years, um, session one, our aquatics team delivered 323 swim lessons which is amazing for a, a session one, which is two weeks of eight classes of a, a, at a half an hour. 
So they work with, again, the Splash Camp to provide those lessons. And then in addition, our, our community uh, came out and signed up for individual swim lessons as well, too. Session two, which we're currently in and closing up to, uh, today, actually, um, they are delivering 431 swim lessons. Now, the, the great thing about that, too, is scholarships are available. I think they're still available to where they take that swim lesson, if you're a resident, from $55 to $15. So we're really looking forward to it getting a little bit warmer, people being excited to be into the pool, and really taking advantage of that opportunity to get that $15 learn to swim lesson, which will really uh, in, enhance um, our community's ability to be water safe, which is the main goal of our aquatic section. A um, couple things I think I mentioned, I, I said we are preparing for Chicano Heritage. We had our first community meeting with regards to Fiestas Patrias. Um, 2023. Thank you, Commissioner Gomez. And I know Commissioner Diaz showed up. It was a very interesting evening. Um, we were sharing our vision for bringing back the parade this year. So the parade is on the docket for this year. Um, we shared our, our ideas on how to make the parade more inclusive, to really open it up to obviously those that have been part of the parade in the past, but also new groups so that they can share in the cultural celebration of our two-day major event that takes place um, on Flower Street and will take place on Flower Street again this year. Um, we're looking to continue to work with those community groups and try to find a way where everybody's happy, but that may not be the case, but we're going to do our darndest to make sure that that's the case. Um, but our special events team is working very hard on that. Um, I'll leave, I'll, I'll end there. Um, other than saying that in August, we're preparing for the Santiago Park ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, I think that's been mentioned a couple of times. So we're just waiting for when the contractor hands the park back over to us so that we can start planning and send out invitations to you all so that you guys can be in attendance. In addition, in August, we're anticipating that the uh, Ed Carruthers Park will also have its ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, and like Susie said, um, Memorial Pole is going to be de decommissioned after 63 years. So we're going to be putting together a thanks for the memories memorial um, kind of celebration as we close down that facility um, and look to the new installment of a new aqua facility down the road as well, too. So those are things to be aware of, put on your calendars, um, but we'll provide more specific dates once we, we get to, um, you know, that time and we get all that information that we need before we can kind of make that announcement. With that, I'll end my presentation and be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, um, Manager Pagano. Any questions or comments from the commission? I do. Um, first, you talked about the Chicano Heritage Festival and it included everything that you guys are going to do, which sounds amazing. Um, is there going to be a, a spot for resources for the community or is it just... Yeah, so yeah, we, uh, in all of our citywide special events, we include vendors. So if you have somebody that you would like to see maybe attend or, you know, um, and I know uh, Commissioner Wu often puts Artesia Pilar Neighborhood Association mm -hmm. in that space. Um, we would just ask that you funnel them through our special events office and I can get you that information afterwards. And we absolutely, not a problem. Thank you. No and then problem. that was one. And then number two, the meeting that I attended with the Fiestas Patrias, so you guys could get some context. It was very heated. People were very territorial. The and I don't know if they're all residents because they were mentioning LA a lot, <laughs> uh, but they were very territorial, didn't want any new people participating in the parades. Um, I wasn't going to be there and argue, but I agree with us being more transparent, being fair to everybody, even the new incomer. Um, I know I overheard also discussions, them not liking that it's not only Mexican independence, we're not only celebrating Mexican, but all Latino heritage. And, and I, I got I heard some like, no, what is the, September 16th is Mexican independence. Why are we celebrating others? And so to me, I felt the staff, I really gave kudos to you guys there, but I want to acknowledge you guys publicly because they did so well handling the crowd. It was very heated. Like they were really under pressure and they were just poised and they were polite and they were respectful and they were listening to, you know, the, I'm not going to say residents because I feel some of them weren't even residents, <laughs> uh, but the people that attended, um, and so I just want to give them a huge shout out and say that I agree with what the, the steps the cities are taking in regards to being inclusive and being make, making sure that, you know, everybody that can participate and not one thing is, is dominated or have territory over. And I, 
I think we all love Santa Ana so much that it happens in neighborhood association. It happens everywhere that we just, it's mine and I don't want to let anybody else. So I think that having a process in place is super important. So I just want to give you guys kudos for that. Thank you. And then my third thing was the youth excursions. I know I've mentioned it before. I've noticed that it's always at number one, El Salvador mm -hmm. Park, which is a way. I think it should really be accessible to all youth, not just whoever lives near El Salvador Parks, so maybe taking turns, having the pickup be different locations. Yes. And number two, and I know I talked with Commissioner Diaz about this too, was some of the events post, like there's an opening and as soon as you go, it's full. So I'm wondering where this full coming from? Is it the same kids going? Because I think also, can we save some for everybody else in Santa Ana, all the other youth in Santa Ana that also want to participate that might not be connected to one of your centers? Sure. Yeah. Um, great questions. And I just so that you know, our teen excursion program is under review. We've had some staffing changes as of, as of late. So on Monday, um, the teen excursion program staff is going to be meeting with me and we're going to be discussing all the things that you have brought up in previous commission meetings and everything, um, specifically um, multiple sites, uh, increasing the participation from where we're at right now, which is 50 to doubling that to 100 to see if that can alleviate some of the, you know, it just opened and now it's closed type thing. We want to make sure that we're optimizing the amount of participants that are able to attend each one of the um, uh, excursions. And the way to do that also is to incentivize it. So, you know, we are, we have been for the last couple months um, putting in an educational experiential uh, excursion at the front of the month and then doing a fun one at the second one of the month. So we've gone to UCI, we've gone to the fire station, we've gone to the Santa Ana Zoo and brought our kids there. And as you can imagine, those are a little bit less well attended and everything. But I think what we want to try to do is for those that do attend that, hey, now you have priority, right? And good grades, you have priority. Um, volunteerism, you have priority. So I think by doing that, there's a little bit more skin in the game for the kids at that point. And then we're maybe able to mitigate some of those concerns that you have. So we are going to be talking about that in depth on Monday. Um, and hopefully we'll have a report back as far as what we came on. And and for me, the, the important part is because the um, program has become so popular is to plan out a year in advance. So let's identify right now what those uh, excursions are going all the way till summer of 2024. Let's get it out there and let's really try to focus on those experiential opportunities. Um, and I'm really anxious to you know get with the team and kind of hear what their ideas are for the next iteration of our teen excursion program. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Um, for special events, um, you said that it's a special events department that's handling um, if any organization or group wants to table at an event, but is there a way that that can be made public? Because I have had different people um, asking me where can they find this information because it's it's not, I can't, I couldn't find it on the city website. Okay. So if we can make that public and also if we could rotate so that we're not always seeing the same organizations at every event, because there's so many different um, groups in the city that it would be nice to see a variety of them, not just always the same ones at the events. True. Sure. Um, also, if um, we could also look at the carnival also having it at Fiestas Patrias, I heard that we are uh, exploring having it at the Chicano Heritage Festival, but I always remember um, having carnival at a lot of different city events, and that's something that always attracts families and the little ones as well. Sure. Um, that's it. Yeah, and, and and we'll work on you know getting that information out via the special events page on our website um, with the carnival for Fiestas Patrias. That's built that's built in for this year. Um, we're exploring a new vendor than what we had last year, so um, we're hoping that we are able to get a lot of different elements that may be a little bit different than what we experienced last year. So thank you for those comments, Manager Pagano. I think. Um, um, the for the teen excursions, yeah, maybe if it's like um, um, like three, you know, per youth, and then you know, um, because I can I can imagine if it's like between now and the end of the year, I'm gonna sign. If I have my kids, I'd sign them up for all of them, right? Sure. And then it might limit the opportunity for other folks to kind of. So if it's like you know, select three th for uh, the next year, 
And then that way it's um that's a great idea. Equity and um and getting more participation from different youth. And um yeah, I had um uh, one of the organizations uh, reach out to me in relationship to Chicano um Chicano Heritage uh, Festival. And so um I'll also reach out to you in relationship to how they can participate. I, I could probably provide the address. Is it is there a dash between special events or is it just special events? And so for those vendors or interested parties, they would just email their interest in participating in any of our events and our special events team will provide an application for them so that we understand, you know, kind of what they're willing to bring and, um, you know, and a lot of times what our special events team looks for and this might, you know, kind of build off of what Commissioner Zacharias Torres was saying is we're trying to find appropriate events. Right. So it doesn't make sense for us to have three lawyers at a movie in the park event, you know, but we want to try to spread it out and make sure that there is that equity. And we are also not having, uh, you know, maybe I like lawyers, but if they, you know, if they were competitive and stuff, um, you know, that may, you know, be an element that we wouldn't want to really introduce to that event. So, but yeah, that, that would be the place where you would encourage all those interested parties to send an initial email and our special events team will contact them. Is it? What was that? Oh yeah. And they can become a partner. You're talking about the lawyers though, right? All nonprofits. <laughs> Is um is there a cost associated to uh, being a special events being at a special event? No, I mean it, it depends on the event. Like our our premium events, like Chicano fiestas, and what what iteration the Winter Village takes place this following year. Those have been identified as our premium events. So there may be a, a vendor charge to be there. But like at our community events, movies in the park, concerts in the park. Uh, I think I, we would be hard pressed to charge fifty dollars, especially if you're self-contained and you know coming into the park space and everything. But we can get that information and share that with you. Um, so I'm just not guessing off the top of my head. Is the you mentioned the Chicano uh, Heritage Festival is a a, a premier event or um, okay? Yeah, our our three premier events just based on response from the community is Chicano. Uh, I guess you could probably throw in 4th of July there based on numbers, but Chicano Fiestas and our Winter Village, um, we will be um, incorporating a Tet Festival this year. Uh, so we're in the midst of having, we're going to be starting our conversations with our community-based organizations for not only the Mid-Autumn Festival, which will be year two, but a, test, a Tet celebration in February of 2024. Great. Thank you so much. And um the other question that I had, um, where um, at today, um, the mayor announced um, the, we, that we're receiving $6.6 .6 million from the California Department of Social Services, which is great. I, I always love uh, money from the state. And um, can you elaborate a little bit sure. more on the what do we have kind of earmarked for that? Absolutely. So uh, a huge shout out to our uh, management analyst, Cindy Sanginito. Um, her and I have been in conversations with the state probably now for about six or seven months, but a, a large bulk of the work was done by her in terms of the application and everything. Um, we applied for a contract. It, I think the mayor today said it was a grant. It's not a grant, it's a contract. So the great thing about a contract is, is that we have the ability to earn $6.69 .6 million annually as long as this area is funded by the state government. So this could be a multi-year opportunity to earn $6.69 .6 million every single year for the city of Santa Ana. Uh, a couple of highlights is that we've searched their, um, their database. We're the first city to ever achieve this contract with the state. So that's really exciting. Um, the second part is, is that the minimum amount of participants that we would have to serve to achieve that 6.69 is 515 kids. Crazy, right? But that doesn't limit us from expanding our programs beyond that. We just get paid for the 515 that will basically achieve low or free school age programming at any one of our recreation sites. In addition, um, we're partnering with uh, PAL at Roosevelt Walker and Santa Anita because those are uh, PRCSA sites. The programs that are within 
we can fund those programs that come out of those specific sites. So we're really excited about the opportunity of that because knowing PAL and working with PAL on incorporating them into our recreation and community centers, they have a budget of like $30,000 a year, which is insane for the amount of impact that they have within the community and everything. So for us to be able to have this amount of money to not only provide great programming for you know our community at a, a wonderful low free price, um, but to have that element in there too and be able to support that program is really exciting as well. So we have we we we've received two award letters um, signifying that yes, six point six nine million dollars is our amount that we would be receiving um, on this contract. With that, we get a 25% seed money. So once we sign and execute our contract, we have about $1.6 million that we will be will have access to. And that will be, for us, we're prioritizing um, vans, transportation, um, and the ability to be able to pull kids from the schools. And, and again, I think the initial reaction is like, hey, the schools already have Engage 360, right? Well, there's waiting lists at a lot of the schools at, you know, for Engage 360. So we see this as an opportunity to alleviate some of the pressure that the school district has with those wait lists. We can kind of be that catch-all for those kids that maybe signed up too late or the, the program's impacted and they only have a few spots. We're thinking that we'll be able to achieve what our department's mission is, is to serve every kid, right? And what our city's mission should be is to serve every resident, right? And so we're really excited about that. We haven't executed the contract because we're still waiting on our technical assistance phone call from the state. So once we do that, we'll have a little bit more details as far as what our parameters are in terms of spending that money. But we're like I said, we're prioritizing um, transportation, uh, we've identified some community-based partners that we're already working with in terms of uh, infusing in uh, dramatic arts, enrichment, um, and athletics into our um, programs as they exist right now. And the great thing about it is all of the sections that we have from community engagements to aquatics to athletics to health and wellness, community education, all of these sections will support our youth services section, which will be created as a result of receiving this contract. And we'll be able to infuse all those programs into those spaces. And we're talking year round program. It's not just during the school year, our day camps next year, even though they have a hundred and hundred ten dollar price tag this year, um, we'll have to see how much we can reduce that so that there's more access to those programs. Cause you know, with our community, we, we recognize that, even at the price point of $110, that could be still be cost prohibitive for some of our families to participate in stuff. So um, yeah, Mayor announced that we're, we're thrilled that we're gonna be able to participate in this and looking forward to impacting the community positively. This is great. I think it, it's it's a large percentage of the bu potential budget, right? Like uh, our stream. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, for a department that has, what do we have, 3% of the budget, Hawk? 3% of the budget, which is $20 million, and that's between recreation and zoo. Um, are you seven and we're 13, or is it opposite? You're three? Okay, so I, get, I just doubled your budget. No, but to be able to, to bring this in um, through, again, it was an intense process. The application was very daunting, um, but to be able to bring this in and and again, it's not a grant. So again, I don't think, I, I think our message to the council would be is like, hey, we need to hold up our end of the bargain to earn this money. It's not a, a given that we're going to be receiving this year over year. You know, there could be some years where we earn our full potential in our contract. There could be some years, and I don't know what the reasons would be, where we earn half of that. So it's not where you can then look at the general fund from a parks recreation standpoint and say, oh, let's go ahead and take some of this money because another agency needs it or we're going to prioritize another agency's need. We're still going to need that 3%. Um, but we're also going to be very wise and good stewards of the 6.69 that is going to be coming in via this contract. Is it reimbursements, the 6.6? Correct. Okay. So so essentially, um, the way that the pay structure works is the first quarter, you get a larger bulk of whatever the reimbursement is. And it's based on the amount of participants, those 515 that we work with in that first quarter, right? So um, there will be a little bit of a lag. That's that's why I think we're afforded the 25% of non-contract based money. So the 1.6 that we're going to be receiving once we sign the contract, 
Um, we don't have to justify it through, oh, well, we have four or five program sites open. That's just get your program started. Um, the other nice thing about it is, is that there's no expectation for us to start programs uh, for three years. So we can take our time, we can build our infrastructure in terms of staffing that is going to be needed for all these kids that we're going to be serving, um, you know, identifying locations. There are some locations like Memorial that are going to be decommissioned, but being built back up so we can bring Memorial online. We can bring Logan, which I think is going to be going through some construction online as an after school perm um, location and everything. Um, there's one other one, Garfield. Initially, we didn't put Garfield in that because, again, it sits on the uh, the elementary school site, but we could add that as a potential after school program space. So the the potential, the, the, the more we talk about it, the more excited we get because it really has far reaching implications for the community. So, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. This is great. I, I think maybe we can come back for a discussion on um, some of the line items that you may be thinking about sure. for this. Um, for this um, new contract that we will be getting from the state. And um, yeah, I think that this should definitely be complimentary to what we already get, you know? So it's like, no, mm -hmm. you know, more money for parks and recs is always a good thing. And so um, I, I think we should, you know, uh, add this to the additional funding we already have and get from the city. Um, okay, um, I have no other questions. Uh, Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda are commissioner comments. We are at the end of our meeting, and um, um, well, this is the time for each commissioner to provide comments if they wish, but not required. We'll start with um, Ward One, Commissioner San Matthews. Thank you. Um, kudos to all of you guys. That's amazing that we were able to get this contract. That's um, great to hear. I can't wait to hear some more about what's what's um, what we're going to be doing and all the amazing things and programs that's going to come out of it. So thank you very much. Um, again, thank every one of you guys for the great updates. Um, it's amazing to see all these things that's going to be happening. Thank you very much. Um, our next commissioner is uh, for more two, uh, Commissioner Zacarias Torres. Thank you for all of the information. It was great to see that the number of the summer camp um, youth has increased. As a former um, program leader for the summer camp program, I, it was just 20 to 25 kids, and now it's um, over 90. So that's really exciting to see. And um, hopefully within um, speaking about transportation, we can also consider an environmentally friendly um, alternatives, such as including hybrid and electric to modernize our fleet transportation. Thank you. Uh, our commissioner for Ward 6, Commissioner Gomez. It's cold in here. Um, I'm always impressed with everything that you guys do. It makes me so sad. I don't know about the other commissioners when I hear 3% and the need that Santa Ana has for our resources that we provide. And I say we, even though it's you guys, <laughs> um, it, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. So I, I love that um, it was mentioned that we shouldn't take away from our budget, right? We should just keep adding. And I think it should be always like that. I think when time and time again, when I've assisted the, the budget meetings, every single meeting I've attended for years, it's the same thing. And it's, we're still at 3%. <laughs> and the community has spoken. I think we all appreciate everything you guys do. I mean, you see it by the numbers, by the growing numbers. We see it at the zoo. We see it at the library with all the amazing things they're offering now. And I just commend you all because at 3%, you guys are doing phenomenal above and beyond. And I'm just congratulations because you guys are great. Great. I will provide um, my comments. Uh, I think um, we the city council on Tuesday approved the first reading of uh, adding two more commissioners uh, to represent uh, two seniors. So I think uh, we're on track to having two more commissioners on this uh, commission. And I think that's really great. And I think I just want to welcome folks to um, march with um, Mayor Pro Temp Lopez of, on OC Pride, uh, which is on June 24th at 10.30 a.m. Uh, here in Santana. And so I um, hope to see some of you all there. 
and um, executive director, do you have any comments? That might've been your shortest um, comments I've heard. <laughs> so much information we give out. I just want to touch on a couple of things. Like I said, uh, our movies in a park, you know, we do have the Zootopia coming up and as well as Beauty and the Beast, but after that, we still have two more left. So we got four more weeks of um, movies in a park and we want you guys to come out, you know, so Zootopia at the zoo, Beauty and the Beast at El Salvador. Um, we're gonna have Nanta Museum out at Jerome. And then we're gonna end with one of my favorite movies that Disney has put out in Pixar, uh, Coco out at Portolo. So those are the next four coming up. And uh, just our engagement team today, they did put out our concerts in the parks uh, flyer, who's coming, days time. So got about a little under four weeks, uh, July 20th, we will start out at Rosita Park with Latin Soul. And then as a, uh, well, I'm saying this, I'm actually, I'm probably saying this for the last time um, from uh, Manager Pagano out here. And I'll tell you why right now. Um, July 4th is coming up. You know, we won't meet again until after that. So, you know, we do encourage everyone to come out here. You know, we got, you know, we're going to have live music, food, kids zone, exhibit, exhibitors, raffles, you know, beer garden will be out there, which, you know, has seen a big, big hit and, you know, gives our adults, you know, some fun things out there as well. And one of the things we're introducing, I know Tim's really excited about this, is our patriotic pup contest. So we hope, you know, people get into spirit and dress their puppies up uh, patriotic style. And um, I guess at this time, if, if I can get Ethan and, and Tim to come stand up here at the mic real quick. Yeah, they, they didn't know about this. <laughs> so these two right here are you, my right my right hand people, my right and left hand people. And through what we're doing in parks recreation, you know, we've been doing a lot of restructuring. We've been doing a lot of rehiring, you know, and, and these two have my full confidence to, you know, run this department if they can. So it is a pleasure for me to let you guys know that this will be the last meeting that you'll actually call these two managers. As of July 1st, these two right here are getting title changed, and you will now have to refer to them as deputy directors of, wait, 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 let me finish the title. <laughs> so now we will have, um, they will now be uh, known as deputy directors of parks, recreation, and community service with uh, Mr. Pagano overseeing the parks and recreation side as well. As, and then Ethan will, of course, be overseeing the zoo side. We want to take that 22 years of hard grit and grime and everything he's done for that. So I want to recognize these two. And then, of course, the ones behind them, you know, Susie, I can just go over and over and time after time again, how much drive, how much passion, how much love she shows for what she does. And she hit it right on the nail. So, I mean, we had a little when she said, you know, your vacation tonight because we don't want to lose that time. <laughs> But she, it's well deserved. We we love everything she does, and again, Corey bringing her on and and a team that she has created, and and the energy and and the passion, and you know, it's just these are just the little changes I keep telling you guys about. But like I said with these two right here, I'm I'm very proud that we're able to do that, and it's, it's well deserving. And I mean. I can go on and on, you know. And again, looking across the table, you know, Bill and and Hiram, just you know, if you guys saw at our commission meeting, you know, we had our parks and recreation month and, you know, with NRPA, it's, you know, where community grows. And then with the California, you know, park lace, uh, parks make life better. And what you guys saw up there was just a small, small sample of what the team is. I mean, maybe, uh, what is that? 2% of our team, if you were to include everything and they all showed up because they want to be there. I didn't have to beg them. I didn't have to order them. I, you know, they showed up because everyone that was up there, everyone that's part of the team takes pride in what they do. They show passion. They show love. And I think you guys are starting to see that with everything we're doing. And again, like with you guys, you know, we want to have all seven of you here and, you know, continue to meet and get your ideas and for you guys to be advocates for us. So just wanted to bring these two up here and say this is the last time you'll see them as managers up here. So and other than that, yeah, well deserved. And like I said, other than that, you know, happy Fourth of July. You know, we hope we hope we see you all out at the park. It's going to be fun. The fireworks show is always amazing, and you know they'll even be able to see our our new security lights, our our new lighting out there. At, at I mean, there's just so much going on, and it, it's unbelievable. So again, thank you guys, and those are my comments.
boys and girls. Um, um, thank you so much, Executive Director. Um, I did also forget to mention that we do have, we got shirts for our Parks and Recs Commission. So if you can share your size. We, yeah, we don't have shirts yet. Okay, we shirts will need yet. your, <laughs> we would like, again, you are a, I mean, y'all are part of us. I know you said something, we appear, and I wanted to say no. You guys are a part of us. You know, you're a part of like what makes this well oil machine run. And, you know, we just wanted to make sure we had everything clear and good to get you guys, you know, with, with our, our new logo and your name on it and, you know, show that you are a part of our Park and Recreation Commission. So uh, Roberto will reach out or uh, Bill will reach out. And like I said, they're, 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 they come in men's or women's. We just need your size. And guess we need, just need to pick on a color and I'll, I'll work with you, Roberto, see what we want to come up with. So yes, it is coming because again, you guys are a extension of what we do. Can I just mention last time we got shirts, the women got really low cut shirts without buttons and the men got regular shirts. So can we order men's shirt or if the women want women, you guys can. But just please do not differentiate the men and the women. No, it, it was it, like no buttons. I'm like, I am not going to show all of this. No. <laughs> you do not want to see it. I don't want to show it. Okay, I, I will reiterate again. You guys can choose between men's and women's shirts. You know, again, we it's your choice. You know, again, some some women like to you know like the men's shirts. You know, so it's all right. You know, so again, it's your choice. Um, if you'd like, I can have a demo each shirt if you want to see what they look like. I'm actually wearing the men's. Um, Susie actually has a women's, if you'd like to see it. Well, it's a small, yes, but it's a, that's the type of shirt it is. They're Nike, they're dry fit, you know, and again, they're, they're comfortable, they're breathable. I so, can make it work. So yeah, so we'll work on that together. Great. Thank you so much. And um, that is the conclusion of our meeting. The next regular meeting will take place on Thursday, June 27th at 20, 2023. Uh, meeting adjourned at 7.43 p.m.